Good morning. It's Brian here from Expert Dojo. You are on another episode of The Art of Startup War. Now, the only reason you are here is because you are looking to invest in early stage companies that have tremendous potential and you love listening to this particular podcast because the people we are investing in are the ones on the podcast. So we're not promoters. We're not telling you, oh, we think this company could be good. We are people who truly believe in the companies that we have invested in so much that we want to make sure that our investor friends get to hear why we believe these companies have so much potential to be able to break through over the next couple of years. The company that I'm speaking to today has got really a dual, really happy feeling. The first one is because... The market it's in is destined to become multiple, multiple, multiple billion dollar markets. So you'll hear when we go through it. But the second thing is it just does such a wonderful thing in the world. And I remember when I first listened to the founder speaking about why they had built this product and who this product was for, I remember thinking, actually, this is a product I'm going to be using for my own family myself. And that's it. That's the bar right there. If I look at a product, I look at a service, I look at a technology, and I think I desperately would like to have that, and I immediately picture myself using it for a family member, I know that this is a company that's going to be able to break through. So Jill, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Brian. Fantastic. And it is a show, really, because People are really interested, especially investors, to know about what would possibly possess a perfectly sane person to go on this journey of entrepreneurship. And you are not only a sane person, but a highly intelligent person. And and you've gone on this this impossible journey to build something that the world needs so much, but it's so hard. Can you... I, 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 we're going to really get to kind of where the product has evolved to today. And and it's so beautiful, as I said, what you created. But can you take us right back to the beginning when you came up with this idea and take us to the genesis of how it all began? Yeah, and it's it's so funny you mentioned, Brian, because somebody was talking to me the other day and said, yeah, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I said, really, does that mean you're insane? Because <laughs> I said, why does anybody do this more than once? Um, but, uh, you know, for me, it is personal, right? I mean, you know, when we chatted kind of at the genesis of this idea, I was really, I was sitting at a several day conference of all places, uh, a healthcare conference out in Las Vegas, right? Where all good healthcare people apparently go to talk about health, right? These days. Uh, but, you know, I'm sitting in, in session after session, talking to people and, and listening to all of these amazing founders and organizations who have built so many products and are struggling, products, services, technology, apps, and we're just struggling with people's ability to be able to engage and, and meaningfully use them. And then one morning I walked into, um, there was a, a session for um, the, uh, this, the, a woman named Helen Lees from Oliver Wyman was doing this opening keynote speech and was talking about how in, women control roughly 80% of all of the healthcare spend and utilization in the US. And this is, you know, as you mentioned, Brian, this is not by any means only for women. But as I was sitting there, you know, people were talking about in all of these sessions, you know, utilization, right? People talk about using healthcare services and, and talking about patient adherence, you know, all these technical terms that we talk about for the humans who are at the center of these health journeys. And I was thinking to myself, like, oh, who's in charge of adherence in my household, right? We've got doctors, we've got pharmacists, but the person who's making sure that people do what they need to do to take care of their health is me. It's you. It's those people in our families, in our lives. And that doesn't have to be a parent. It doesn't have to be a child. It can be a neighbor looking in on somebody. It could be a friend. Kith and kin stands for, it means it's an old fashioned term for friends and family, because we know that that's actually how health happens. It doesn't solely happen in a healthcare setting. So much of it happens outside. And for me, I walked out into the hallway and literally called my co-founder and I said, look, there's thousands of brilliant solutions out there with no congruent way to put them in the hands of the people who are actually delivering that care in their circle of friends and family, I have better tools to manage travel volleyball for my mm -hmm. kids than I do to manage the health 
of the people that I care about. Is this a thing? <laughs> and terrible. she, she, you know, very quickly leaned in and said, yeah, she had just gone through a very um, difficult situation with a, a friend with a, on a cancer journey. Uh, we, but we, we all have though, Jill. I, I even remember just when you and I spoke, it was just after I had an elderly uncle um, who actually had a really nice passing. My sister stepped in, did an incredible job. She was the main carer. It was unbelievably difficult. And, but then there were other family members who everybody wants to help, but everybody has their own idea about how to help. And very few people have all of the information. Actually, nobody has all of the information, right? Everybody has little pieces of the information. But the, they had no place to enter all of this information into or to talk about what was happening or what they were worried about. And they ended up falling out, three of them, not even speaking to this day because they disagreed on what should have been done because one would turn up at seven o'clock in the evening and just know what was happening from seven till the next morning. And there was no cohesive platform that allowed the carers to be able to work together, to have access to all of the information, to know what was being done when, to know where help was needed and where there were gaps and actually people stepping in would have really helped. It was chaotic. And I think that reflects... 80% of all of these situations as they happen because it's not like we plan. And, and I use elderly relatives, but it's not just elderly relatives. It could be kids, it could be anything else. But, but if we use it as the one that kind of, it, 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 it stands out to all of us as the case that none of us plan for, none of us are saying, well, you know what's going to happen in about three years and 226 days, we're going to have to deal with this entire situation and we're going to put a plan in place. Now, everybody's like, oh, I hope it never happens. And, and oh, when it does, it would be the day of my nightmare. And it is the day of people's yeah. nightmares. And then because they're not prepared for it, because they pretend and hope it will never happen, it ends up being a nightmare multiplied by 10 and that's why kith and kin is so incredibly important and i could see how you were looking around that day and saying to yourself hang on why is there nothing to support the one thing that is so tremendously important with the people that we love yeah absolutely and you used a really key word there brian which is collaboration um and it's interesting i think there's not a name for the space yet right so it's kind of in care tech but it really is a, a health collaboration solution. It's to enable you to provide the right information to the right people at the right time to actually allow people to finally manage health the way they manage life. In, in real life, you know, we talk to hundreds of people, spend over a thousand hours in user research. And to your point, Brian, every person we talked to started out with their story, you know, their personal story of the struggle and when this happened to them. And you know, there's some very simple tenets of kith and kin, right? So people share some information with some people for some purposes and some information with other people for other purposes. That's how we manage health. We also don't manage it largely through patient portals and medical records and things like that, no. right? We, we're texting each other. We're sending uh, text of pictures of everything from rashes to discharge procedures to medical documents to a whole host of things we probably shouldn't be texting, right? But this is what we need to be able to enable is the human who's really at the center of this to be able to, to do those very simple ways where they're not trying to learn an entire medical system in order to support their family. I still have a bet with Genevieve, my compatriot over here at Expert Dojo and someone who I know you've worked with very closely. I think divorced parents are going to use this it's, even more. I just, I'm so sure of this. And she's like, no, this is a caring app and it's going to be for caring. And it's going to be, I'm like, Jen, I'm sure divorced. I can see it now because it's not like the mom or the dad is going to call up the partner's new girlfriend stroke boyfriend and say, you know, I've got some great advice for you on how to take care of my child. So you make a great look. I, you know, I adore Genevieve, <laughs> but I got to tell you, we've already started looking into that because I mean, there's a whole, um, a whole space out there of co-parents, dual parent households, you know, um, divorced family members, people who've moved out of, you know, out of state, things like that. Those are all folks, to your point, who need to be able to have access to information, but really do struggle to talk to each other. And by the way, there's some relatives people would what, like to be divorced from, right? <laughs> they would prefer not to call that aunt or that uncle when these things are going on. 
but they got a call about mom's condition or whatever if there's not some other way to provide information. Yeah, and food habits and yeah. child's eating habits and who allergies. you want them playing with, allergies, what yeah. time they should be in bed at, how they react, what ho- like there are there are a lot of areas within where they're working for. So I think the market is absolutely enormous here and also the world has become much bigger. Families have become more dispersed, unfortunately, and the glue that actually kept people together, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, I, I sound like my, my granddad now, but the glue that kept us, <laughs> next thing I'm going to say is we used to be able to leave our front door unlocked, but yes, that glue that kept us together all those years ago has now gone, and because of that, awful, terrible mistakes will be made. And if we go back into elder care again, I mean, there are certain tablets, pills, drugs, medicines that they need to take in very particular orders at very specific times or or they will die. It's not just they'll feel bad or they won't make it through. Like they'll die. Um, And there's also advice about the behavior of those people that needs to be known by all of the members of the family. And to your point, there are other things which are more private, which only need to be known by certain members of the family. But for somebody to be able to control that, it's so much better than having to WhatsApp all the time and continually copy and paste the same information after a problem has happened. Yeah. Well, and to your point, we talked to so many families who talked about the struggles of the myriad of caregivers coming into, you talked about, again, it's not just for aging family members, but there's certainly an application in home care because we started to talk to folks about, well, so what do you do with visiting nurses or private duty nurses or when the neighbor comes in? Well, you know, we have a spiral notebook sitting on the counter and everybody who comes in to take care of dad takes a picture Oh, of God. the spiral notebook <laughs> to text to the group text after the last oh, person so that the person no. who could see it, I went, are you kidding me? Does, <laughs> does anyone know what year this is, right? Like I can Venmo you a dollar this afternoon. I can access virtually any information I need on anything related to my kids' grades or schools or anything. And to give you any health information, even if I want to give it to you, I can't. There is no way for me to share it with you safely in any kind of secure mechanism today. So I think everybody who's listening now, every single person is not only thinking, oh, yes, this is a great idea. They're also thinking, I actually have an exact relative that I can place in this precise moment that this app should be used for by the immediate and not so immediate members of that person's family. So that is done, written in stone. Everybody agrees with Brian and Genevieve. This was a great company to invest in. But tell me, how did you take it from... Yes, this is a huge problem that's facing the world. Yes, it is insane that nobody else is fixing this problem right now. And then all the way to, we've just built a platform which is intuitively beautiful and actually speaks to all of these different stakeholders in such a seamless way. Like it, it, is, it is really, look, we can always make things better, but not even for a first reach, beautiful human-centric design on what you've put together because it's simplicity sings through. So how did you take it from that realization to the point where you actually had a fully built product? Yeah, well, look, you know better than anybody when you're in a consumer space, because yes, we are in healthcare, this is personal health information, but at the core of this is the human who is at the center of this journey. And so when we went out to look at the marketplace and went out to just start to talk to people, we went on a listening tour. Nine months of just listening to people, the stories like you told, the stories like hundreds of others told us. And we talked to them about how they do it now. What tools do they use? What solutions do they have? I use that term lightly. And because what we recognized is that in order for someone to be able to use a tool like ours and meaningfully be able to engage, it has to mirror existing behaviors. The kiss of death in any consumer solution is believing you're gonna change the way someone lives their life. Mm. Yes, we wanna make it better, but what we recognized is that as we listened to folks way before we wrote one single line of code, we listened to those stories. We looked at, well, let me show me your notebook right? Show me your three ring binder. Show me how you organize your tabs in your binder. Show me what kinds of information you send in these group texts. Talk to me about what things you are storing and where are you storing them. 
And so when I said we wanted to build a tool that helped you manage health the way you manage life, what we really built that. So you don't have to understand how to navigate medical records or understand patient portal constructs and all of the things that are really daunting, even in steady state. But when you're in a particularly vulnerable position, that's the last time you want to be learning something that's completely new to you. So we intentionally built this tool so you can do exactly what you're doing today, just in one place that's secure and organized. So go ahead, snap a picture of your rash, of those pr discharge procedures, of those lab results, whatever that is. Instead of texting something, stick it in a very short Twitter-like block that has a couple of notes in there that stores that story for you. Instead of creating a massive text string with questions that you need to ask for dad's next doctor's visit, just stick them all in the questions section and everybody can collaborate on it. Simple as a group text, but it's one place. And next time you go to hit that doctor's office, whoever's taken dad to the doctor sees the 12 questions that the six siblings who wanted to collaborate, so to speak, on this, were they wanted to have answered. We had intentionally designed this so that you don't have to change human behavior, but we're really making it easier for you to organize and share that information with the right people so that they have it at the right place and the right time. And getting that type of simplicity is incredibly difficult. Did you build the user journey? And talk to me a little bit about the rest of the team. Yeah, no. So I have a fantastic uh, founding team made up of a, uh, a leader, my co-founder, who you've obviously met, Amanda mm -hmm. Havard, um, who led us through the entirety of the user research journey with her partner, um, uh, um, Erica McFall Irwin, who is just a genius from a UX um, and user interface standpoint and really thinks about how people think and is able to very quickly translate those human stories into very simple, clean design. To your point, Ryan, it's one of the things we pride ourselves on. It's one of the clearest pieces of feedback we've gotten consistently was the clean nature of the design, the ease of use. Uh, because I, hate you know, I hated it. I hated it because normally I go onto a website when I'm speaking with someone and I can say, that's terrible. It's just, it's just wrong. And, and it's not clean. And it doesn't speak to people. And where's your call to action? I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel so insecure. I can't find anything. I need to look harder at this. There has to be something wrong with with this so it's just very clean all of it's very clean and of course look things can always be better but but genuinely i loved it like even as you go into your website and at the beginning it's like care for those you care about like it's so i swear to god it almost makes me cry because i go to so many websites which are so insanely feature-based which have nothing to do with the user journey and everything to do with those of us who are building our product wanting to show the wonderful thing that we've built. And, and yours doesn't say, care for those you care about. How, how beautiful is that? Like that's what, if you use our app, you are demonstrating that you care at a higher level. But that's powerful. That's at our core. We all have such different lives totally different lifestyles. And you'll see that if you kind of read into anything the, about our founders. I mean, we couldn't be more different, our group of the collective teammates, but we all bring similar perspective in terms of that deep desire to care for those that we care uh, that we currently care about or that we have over the course of years. Many of us have journeys we've taken similar to the ones you've mentioned um, of folks who have since left us, we have family members who still need us. We have friends, we have colleagues, we have someone who's a single, my co-founder is single with no children, caring for a mother in a late stage cancer journey. I've got three kids wow. and a husband and three cats and a sister-in-law that lives with us and a whole jumble of people that I'm taking care of at all different, um, and all, from all different walks of life and vantage points. And, um, and our other co-founder, Eric, I mentioned is a paw parent of multiple uh, animals who she's got all tracked and kith and kin. And so, you know, we have, um, we just have a host of experiences that we've come from, but are really unified by that journey of it has to be easier. The, it cannot be this hard. It should not be this hard to care for those you care about. Do you find the pets um, fit in? Because I love my dog. 
like way more than anybody else. Dogs, like dogs are so much better than humans that the more, the more I come home and she just comes to the door, and she licks me and she runs up and she's happy. She never stays upstairs and watches Netflix while I'm walking in. Like she never ignores me as I'm going to make, like she just, so, so for me, dogs are the top of the top of the top. But do you find that, but this, I don't know, sometimes maybe we don't feel like they need as much care as they actually need. Like if we, if we rub them and we're with them and we pet them and we're nice to them and we walk with them, while with an elderly parent or with a divorced couple, even with people who are married, to be fair, but just the more, the more separate they are, obviously the easier it is to, to really for this to be a, a no-brainer. But in the pet area, have you had a huge take-up? So it's interesting. Um, I think you'll find two groups of pet owners, um, some whose animals have no issues and they wouldn't necessarily instinctively see the use for a tool like this. And then you have others with lots of pet issues. So one of the folks on our development team, she's like, you know, when I started working on this, I wasn't, you know, she's a really smart, you know, wonderful um, and, and very talented developer. She's like, I don't know how I was, you know, whether I would use something like this. She's, you know, probably in her mid twenties, give or take. And, um, and then a couple of weeks ago, she's like, yeah. So the summer when I adopted my foster dog, <laughs> who has a whole host of issues and medications and visits, and I, there's no patient portal for my vet records. I just have a pile of stuff. And then someone else um, was like, oh, and I've got to give instructions to the dog walker because right. this dog I is, was just thinking like, that. Literally, has pills, yes. has, you know, it doesn't get along with other dogs or doesn't get along with cats or whatever it is. There's a whole host of things like that that we've heard from folks. And um, one of the, the women, uh, one of our pilots is Independence Blue Cross. And one of the uh, women who runs the HR team there has a three-legged one-eyed dog. And she's like, yep, this is for him. I'm all his stuff. He's got so many things. So I think it'll be very interesting to see because I do think where the pet opportunity is intriguing is that um, to your point, Brian, you know, people love their pets, but they're also used to paying for things for their pets where people sometimes in healthcare aren't used to paying for it. Mm. Right. So that's always the, I think the interesting dichotomy of where I think there's an entry point into that market, because again, People are paying for a whole host of, um, of things and are used to paying for everything out of pocket in that space. I went in my mind from thinking, because for elderly, every single person in the world with an elderly relation should have this. Everybody in the world. No, nobody should be left out. With children, I believe that the more, that the, the bigger the family then the more of a use there is for this children as well. As I said, divorce, broken up, girlfriend, boyfriend, anything like that, there's a 100% case. And then, I, as I said, pets. Pets was the one area I was really thinking out loud. I thought, oh, I wonder. And as I heard myself saying, I don't think my dog needs as much care. I'm like, oh my God, you're such a bad person. Your dog, of course my dog needs as much care. My dog needs more care than my child is. How bad am I? So I actually convinced myself just by listening to myself speaking that every single pet owner in the world should have absolutely all of their medical records on here. They should all of the things. Because I was even thinking about our dog. Like she gets very jealous when other dogs when there's even if she stays in somebody's house and there's other dogs there and then her attention has been taken away she's very prissy so she gets very 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 jealous but if you give her a, if you give her a bone or you give her something she's not jealous anymore she's okay like she gets distracted by so even that is a behavioral trait which is incredibly important to have in there for people that sometimes all the time every now and again yeah. will need to take care of her so, well, it's interesting you yes. surfaced that because, you know, it's one of the things when we talked about this as not being a medical record, right, or a health tool, there is so much of health that happens outside of any kind of healthcare setting. And so much of when we started to talk to folks, you, you, you talked a little bit about kind of why we designed what we designed in that way is when you look at solutions, I'll call it loosely, that are out there today that are largely around structured health data. There's a reason that we call this company Kith and Kin, friends and family, because it is about the care part and that information around caring for the people you care about, right? Because 
yes, it's important that I know what meds my dad will take at what time, those kinds of things. But it's also important that I know that if you give it to him with peanut butter and jelly and this at this time, he'll be great with it. He'll take it. He won't complain, right? Um, this isn't my dad, just in case my dad's listening. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, but those kinds of, um, those kinds of pieces of information around people, you know, the kid will only take the great Robitussin, right? Or the, like all of those pieces of information are the kinds of things that people share. One of our primary investors, one of our first investors invested in us because his wife passed away when his kids were teenagers. Oh. And he said, do you know how hard it was? He said, I knew none of that. You know, yeah. to your point, Brian, he could go back and retrieve certain elements of it from a medical record or by calling a pediatrician, but everything else about those habits and about those elements of their, the personality trait around certain things or sensitivities to foods or any of those pieces, they weren't known, right? So whether I'm giving instructions to a family member who's looking in on an aging parent or a dog sitter or a babysitter or any of those, we intentionally built this very differently because this is about care, the care part of healthcare. And we know that the health part is huge, but there's so much about that goes well beyond the, that pure health component that contributes to the wellness of the people we care for. I agree. It's very beautiful. I even remember, I, I want to jump into the traction in a moment and this going forward. But before I do, I even remember when Genevieve and I got off the call with you on the on the first call. And um, and Genevieve said, what do you think? And I said, you know what I think. Like, I just I just heard that team. And, and I'm glad that you just went through it and all of our listeners also got to hear the team as well. We all know that no matter how great a product is, things change. Consumers react to it in different ways. It's a, it's, a more, it's a difficult journey. But one thing that doesn't change is the team. And when you have a rock star team like you have, it's very, very, very hard to fail. It, it really is. It's just about making it through the minutes and hours and days and all of the heartbeats that are required to take the journey to the extent that it needs to go to. But it's very hard to fail. And it was the thing I was most impressed about before. Is there a need for what you are doing more so than 99.999% of other apps or anything for, for any, any application out there? Absolutely there is. But is your team one of the best teams that I've ever seen? across the board it's incredible and that will see you through absolutely everything so i love what you've built i love 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 the problem you're solving i love the fact that you're bringing the world together a little bit you're giving people a reason to get back around the campfire again and just have those conversations those family conversations that bring people really close and have everybody feeling like they're part of the caring system rather than it being lumped on one person and then having that person have to deal with all of the crap that needs to be dealt with around yeah. that so i just wanted to like plant a big flag there and say what you're doing is really important and however exhausting or hard it is you're doing a wonderful thing in the world well you're very gracious and we um we live for those situations that you're talking about brian because one of the primary pieces of, of user would be user at the time feedback we got was i just need a way to share the load I'm that person who's at the center and I love my family. I love my friends. I love the people that I care for, but it's exhausting and it's isolating and people want to feel empowered. And, you know, we did a lot of soul searching when we built this tool and, you know, thought about things. There's lots of tools out there that are talking to you about how to give you advice to do things and how to, um, you know, illuminate you and give you more information and, and all of that work is great. But at the end of the day, what we really want to do is provide tools that empower those folks who are at the center of that circle to be able to engage people, to be able to share that load, to be able to collaborate, to be able to empower them. And, and one of the primary things we say to them is, look, you've got this and we've got you. That's the message that we want people to believe because in healthcare, it's very hard for people to believe that. It's hard for people to believe they understand enough to effectively care for, and that's what they worry about. They worry they're going to fail 
people when those people need them most. Yeah. That's what the, keeps them up at night. And we need to help them sleep better. Beautiful. I love it. And then so let's talk a little bit about 2022. Let's talk about the traction that you've got so far, the reaction from the consumers. Obviously, everybody loves it. Um, but let's talk about the numbers of how you've built it and some of the proof of concepts that you've put in place so far. And then really, let's jump into 2022 and how much money are we going to raise and how are we going to grow it? And what does the future look like? Yeah. So uh, we've uh, we have five pilots um, that are running. Uh, well, four have run to date, and I can talk a little bit about um, feedback from that at the uh, high level. But uh, and then we have Independence Blue Cross that's launching actually in about thirty days. Um, nice. They decided to launch February first, which is fantastic. Um, we had reached out to them to kind of launch to a smaller group uh, from their team. They want to launch to their entire forty one hundred associates. Um, so uh, and they're just... and they're such a tiny group as well, aren't they? <laughs> Just, did you say to them, normally we want to work with larger companies, but we're prepared to <laughs> yeah, do with a small little startup like you? Yeah, no, it's been, you know, it, it's been amazing um, and, and such a great opportunity for us. They're, they're in so many ways, ways, they are the perfect partner for us to pilot with. Um, for everything from, they've said, look, we've got 10 separate associate resource group, resource groups, everything from parents of children with autism to Asian Pacific Islanders, to Pride, to every different kind of group who has different needs, wow. right? Because that's one of the things we heard. And when we built this, we we looked at every use case, to your point of divorced parents, right? We looked at everything from very nuclear families, you know, who want to share everything with everyone. They've got 2.4 kids and a dog, right? To a group of adult men with a positive HIV diagnosis who only share information with people they consider, they use the term in their house. They call it houses, and that's who they share that information with. All of those different derivations of relationships that are supporting health is the way in which we've built this to make sure that sharing is so granular and that's huge for us because Independence Blue Cross has every um, cross section of lifestyles, geography, otherwise, that has such a huge opportunity. And they've leaned in in a fantastic way already, had several sessions for us with their team to get early stage feedback, working through marketing and communications and materials and really helping us to hone everything from messaging to how do you get employees engaged to what do you need to communicate to them. Um, very important elements of feedback that we've gotten throughout this process, critically to your point about what we learned from the pilots. There were some, um, I will call them legitimately smaller elements uh, from, to your point of kind of feedback on the tool itself and a lot on how to help people get started, right? What do they need to know to build their own personal confidence? So things like very short um, you know, very short, like 30 second kind of how to's, how to get started. Very important to infuse into our messaging. Things like, um, you know, you don't have to download your whole health history to get started. You know, the, the old adage, right? The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. To your point, Brian, you know, you might need this three years from now, right? Your future self will thank you, but you can start today. You don't have to go back 20 years and put some, everything in here. I, the day I picked it up, I put in my next doctor's appointment and information related to that. I put in my kids' symptoms related to something they were having. You can start wherever because you're building the journey from, yeah. you know, for your lifetime. And so I think that's going to be critically important for us as we move forward and why they'll be a great partner. Phenomenal. And how do you see the users growing and how do you see the investment that you require increasing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, so let's start with the user base. Um, one of the beauties of a tool like this is that sharing, because sharing is a core element of the purpose of the tool, we believe there's a fantastic opportunity for viral growth. Sure, absolutely. Um, now, importantly, one of our core value sets was if someone uh, buys or subscribes to our app or it's provided as their employee benefit, uh, there, there is no charge for you to share with anyone at any time. Wow. So basic access and that information once you've paid for your subscription. That was core to us because we never wanted you to not be able to get information to someone who needs it. Yeah. But the beauty of that is when we initially mapped it, and I think this is very conservative, we have mapped people's relationship graphs for a bunch of the folks who were in our early stage user design. 
and the average person shares health information with a, an average of roughly eight other people. So each of those eight other people that you share any information with will come in, do a very simple sign up. They have basic access. They've just put in literally their name, email, and phone number and gotten whatever you shared with them. Mm. I now have that person's name, email, phone number. They've seen our app. Someone else has told them it's useful to them. They have now potentially used it. That is a person that will always have access to see whatever you've shared with them. But now if they want to use it for their own family, we have a built-in customer acquisition strategy where I can reach out to that Amazing. person and say, hey, Brian, you know, Jill just shared information with you. Would you like to use Kith and Kin yourself? You know, do you have any situations in your family? Would you like to just manage your day-to-day -day health? You know, we'd love to show you how it works. Start with a free trial. Come on, you know, come on board. That to us is one of the biggest elements because that allows us, um, when you know anybody who's ever sold into employee benefits knows that your uptake can range pretty dramatically, but it's fairly low to start. It can be anywhere between, I'll say, range anywhere between like three and 15%, kind of at the outset. Even if you only got 3% of an employee benefit, and each of those people shared it with five to eight people, and each of those people shared it with five to eight people, it doesn't take long to start in a B2B channel. And that's intentionally why we started there. It's a lower customer acquisition cost, higher adoption rate, more and faster feedback, both from a product and a go-to-market strategy, but then it allows us quickly to get into market and quickly allowed that viral growth to be able to build up. Amazing. And you're raising how much? And so right now we're raising a million dollars. We have committed 575,000 of that to date. Um, and we're raising a million, hoping to close that in the next 60 days. And we expect the next round to be a little over a year from now. It's, don't close it out before you come in the cohort, okay? <laughs> That's true. We just started. Crying forward. out loud! Come on! Why, why are you getting rid of all of the fun from us? Uh, no. Look, I think I think anybody listening here is going to be is going to know that this is going to be a round that's going to fill very very quickly. It's a very small round. It's at a very reasonable price. It is a highly skilled team that have already executed, that have POCs in place with huge organizations in the healthcare space. Um, I, we hadn't even talked about special needs or people who are sick, but my goodness, that's a whole that's a whole additional conversation on top of where you are right now. So we have all of that going forward. And then we'll get to the end of 2022, stroke the beginning of 2023, and the company will be ready for a very serious A round. So there's so much potential going forward. Is there anything, Jill, that you'd like to finish with? I think, you know, I'm so pleased because you've covered really well you know, how beautiful the app is, how important it is to the folks that use it, the viral ability of the app, how it's going to grow, how you're going to go from the five POCs, the pilot clients so far, and then grow that way beyond that next year. You've done pretty much what you've done so far on fumes without even having a large investment to put into it. So goodness only knows what you can do as you raise the full million dollars on top of that. But if you could share your email address so people can contact you and then sure. also anything final just for our audience so they can really get that feeling as to how this unicorn is going to grow even from where it is today to where it's going to go within the next five to 10 years. Yeah. So my email address is jill at kithandkin.app. So K-I-T-H and K-I-N dot app. Um, and look, for me, the sky's the limit for Kith and Kin. Um, I absolutely see a day where every single time you walk into a doctor's office or I walk over to the neighbors who's taking care of the pets to I am going to to um, to visit somebody who's going to have my kids for the week that just like today I say I'm going to Venmo you five dollars I'm just going to share my kith and kin everything you need to know about taking care of the person whether it's my kids you have you have my dog you're taking care of my parents I'm getting information from you maybe I'm a doctor's office or I'm a chiropractor that that's going to be our exchange system for health information. Everything is going to be able to come in and out of there and that you now will be the gatekeeper of your own health. And to me, that has been a long time in coming because we've had a very, um, for lack of a less sexist term, a very paternalistic system 
that has protected me from myself for far too long. And I do believe when I say to people, you've got this and we've got you, I believe that. And I believe this is where it has to start because we have to give you a way for you to believe you've got this. That's what's going to change the dynamic and the empowerment of our healthcare system and finally enable us to deliver true consumer health that we've been talking about for 30 years. Bringing a lot more care back to the world. Jill, thank you so much. Thank you for letting us invest. It's a privilege being on the journey with you. For all other investors out there, if you don't get it now, you're never gonna. Um, you've got Jill's information that she can email over to her. If anybody would like to ask me anything additional, then please email me at brian at expertdojo.com. But in the meantime, we'll be going out there and helping the world become a better place. Thank you, Jill. Thanks, Brian. Have a great day. And that's a wrap.